Well, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Increased Sales in Healthier Communities, sponsored by the Illinois Farmers Market Association. My name is Deborah Cavanaugh Grant, and I am an ILFA board member and secretary and chair of the Education Committee. Today, ILFMA has the pleasure of welcoming three people, Corey Chapman, Director, Deputy Director of Operations for Experimental Station, Joan Jack and Jacqueline Evers of the Land Connection. Our first presenter, Corey, is the Deputy Director of Operations, as I mentioned, at the Experimental Station. He's also a founding member of the Illinois Farmers Market Association and served on the board for several years. Uh, Corey will share some more information about himself and the Experimental Station prior to his opening comments. Joan is the market manager for the Champaign Farmers Market. She's an Illinois native and grew up in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Her mom grew a garden most years and cooked diverse foods like samosa, egg rolls, artichokes, and tofu all the time. Joan carried this knowledge of a plant-based diet and homegrown veggies with her through her undergraduate and graduate schools. Every place she's lived, Portland, Oregon, Ames, Iowa, Normal, Illinois, she's had a garden, no matter how small. Shortly after moving to Champaign, Illinois in 20, uh, 2005, Joan became a mom and decided to switch gears from geology to backyard market gardening to spend time with her daughter. The switch revealed a new path through the world of farming and farmers markets. She sold at the Urbanus Farmer Market at the Square for four and a half years, offering fruits, vegetables, flowers, and handmade goods. In 2014, her vegetable garden was the first in the annual Champaign County Master Gardeners Garden Tour. Joan loves growing food, flowers, and herbs, and has tried growing almost everything from ranunculus to fennel. Most of her yard is under cultivation for annual or perennial flowers, fruit, or vegetables. Her goal is to have no grass left to mow. Jacqueline is the, is the executive director of the Land Connection, and she joined in, 2000, in May of 2018 from her previous position as the executive director for the Sangamon Valley Youth Symphony, a nonprofit based in Springfield. It was in this position that Jacqueline found her path in nonprofit management. During her tenure with Sangamon Valley U Symphony, the organization underwent a substantial change with operations to improve efficiency and productivity. It experienced increased enrollment in assemblies, acquired stronger, more secure funding sources, and developed an engaged board of directors working on expanding the organization's footprint in Illinois, in Springfield. Jacqueline holds a bachelor's and master's degree in music education from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In addition to her role as an executive director at the Land Connection, Jacqueline maintains an active piano studio in the Champaign-Urbana community. When she's not working, Jacqueline enjoys spending time with her pets, cooking, and all things outdoors. Before we begin today's presentation, I would like to take this opportunity and privilege to introduce our executive director of ILFMA, Janie Maxwell. She has been the executive director for how long, Janie? The last six years, I think? Almost six years. Yeah. She comes to ILFMA as a long, lifelong farmer's market shopper. She's a registered dietitian with a background in program management. Janie is passionate about local food and farmer's market and their benefit to market vendors and the community. Janie? Well, we're excited to have all of you here today. Thank you for joining us. And I uh, just want to take a minute to explain a little bit about the Illinois Farmers Market Association, and then we'll get started with today's presentation. Really, the goal of the Illinois Farmers Market Association is to take the Illinois Farmers Markets to the next level of excellence, wherever our market starts, just to take that next step to provide the best possible market for the community that um, hosts that particular market. We are very excited as an organization to provide uh, professional development and training opportunities for farmers market managers and for vendors. Um, so one of the things that we'll be doing this fall is an e-commerce series or e-commerce presentation um, really looking at what's next for farmers markets and vendors in the e-commerce arena. I think many people started e-commerce uh, as a result of the pandemic and we're hoping to be done with it. 
But unfortunately, consumer demand is saying we really like the e-commerce opportunities. And so at this webinar will explore some potential opportunities that farmers markets have um, moving forward. In addition to that, we are very excited to be offering some in one in-person um, opportunity, Farmers Market um, 101, and that will be in Rockford on October 13th. And then we're going to be offering Farmers Market Manager 101 and Vendor 101 via Zoom during the month of October as well. This fall, we're doing a brand new thing called the Farmers Market Master Series. And we are excited to be offering what farmers market managers are telling us are the next level things they need to deal with. Right now, we're finalizing some presentations on conflict management and the updated cottage food law. And in addition, we will be offering our certified farmers market manager program starting in November. So if you, um, Check out our website on a regular basis or subscribe to ILFMA. We'll keep you updated on these uh, opportunities as registration becomes available. So as Deborah introduced everybody, we're very excited to partner with uh, the Land Connection and Experimental Station Link Up Illinois. They've been significant partners for the Illinois Farmers Market Association. And we really hope today's webinar will give you what you need uh, to potentially take your next step in this particular area of accepting link SNAP benefits at farmers markets. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hopefully, uh, after uh, my brief song and dance, uh, there's two big things I'm hoping that folks will take away from this uh, conversation. Um, one, if you're a, a farmers market that's not accepting link, um, I'm hoping to answer some questions as to um, um, how difficult it is. It, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but you know there, there are some challenges to it too. Um, but the good thing is that the folks on this call can really help you navigate um, your way around that. So um, we tend to make it as easy as possible for your farmer's market to accept SNAP. And then two, uh, once you are able to accept SNAP, uh, I'm hopeful that you'll also uh, want to run a link match program as well. So um, offering your, your, your customers at your farmer's markets a way of buying fresh fruits and vegetables, I think is a really good goal. Um, it helps people eat better and it also helps the farmers uh, get a fair uh, price for their product. So those are the two main takeaways. And most of the stuff I'm sharing with you on this PowerPoint are just numbers as to the impacts of the program and, and stuff like that. So um, you can start wherever you want to start at, Jeannie. I may have even said everything. All right. <laughs> we are having trouble getting the view screen from underneath the controls for Zoom. Can't see the Zoom screen. So I'm going to decrease the size. Sorry. Nope, keeps going back to the old one. I think we may be able to see the text and everything with the size that you did have. You wanna try it? All right. Okay. You know, there's something in the chat. It says, see if you can click on the monitor in the orange ribbon at the top of the page. Okay. Top of the page. Nope. There we go. That may help us. Sorry about this, Corey. No worries. I can't present at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing mouse better than me, so. All right. This is not good. All right, I cannot get rid of the controls at the top that allow me to 
hit view. So if we can see it at this size, it will work. Can you see? I can. Okay, all right. Danny, you might wanna click slideshow. I know, I can't. Oh, you can't, it's not working. Yes, Okay. it's not working. Sorry. All right, so there you go. Tell me when to advance, Lori. Go for it. Uh, in fact, if you wanna go to slide number three, So I wanted to first chat a little bit about SNAP benefits and why a farmer's market should accept them. Um, but slide three is not showing up. I still see slide one. Oh, there it is. Um, so uh, many of you may know that SNAP is the new name for the old food stamp program. So it stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, that name carried a little less stigma to it. Um, so uh, the name was changed back, I want to say early 2000s. And uh, given that change too, um, given that change, the, um, the way in which those benefits were given to SNAP users changed as well. So no longer do we have the old food stamp booklet, it changed to an electronic card where it can be reloaded. So every month uh, benefits are loaded onto a particular person's card and they're able to use that at different locations, grocery stores, farmers markets, um, and anywhere that accepts SNAP electronically. And in our state, um, in each state actually, they branded their card a little differently. They gave it a different name, a different color, a different feel. In our state is known as the link card. Um, but it's still uh, SNAP, it's still food stamp benefits. I can take this link card to Michigan and use it just the same as Michigan can bring their card here and use their card, um, you know, in any of the 50 states. Um, next slide. Next slide shows some of the things that um, you can buy with your SNAP benefits. So, you know, a lot of the staple foods that you would find at farmer's markets, bread, cereals, fruits and vegetables, meats uh, and dairy products. And then a list of a whole bunch of things that you can't purchase with your link card. And, you know, most farmer's markets don't have these items. Um, so it, it kind of uh, makes, uh, at the very least for a SNAP user, well, for everyone, you know, farmer's markets are a very, uh, uh, it's a healthy food environment. Um, but those are some of the things you can use it for and what you can't use it for. Uh, next slide. So why should your market accept SNAP? Well, I would say the numbers of uh, the amount of folks that live in Illinois that are on SNAP benefits is about one out of six uh, folks that live in our state. Um, so you may not know it, but you probably live next to or have a neighbor uh, that's around your farmer's markets that receive SNAP benefits. And they use those benefits as part of the way of uh, getting healthy foods into their household. So uh, offering that to your neighbors and giving them access to the great foods that the farmers are bringing to your market, um, I can't think of a, a, a better way to describe having a healthy community. Um, it, not only that, you're gonna drive more traffic to your market knowing that you know SNAP users can use their SNAP card um, so you're going to increase the shoppers, your farmers are going to sell more food. Um, and again, you know, being a farmer's market, being a community-based organization that you probably are, um, that hopefully it meets your mission about embracing everyone in your community. Uh, next slide. Again, you know, why SNAP support your Illinois farmers? I, I know uh, we need to make sure our farmers are getting a fair price for their products. Um, most, if not 100% of those sales for SNAP goes directly to the farmer. And what normally happens at a farmer's market, you act as a pass-through for those benefits. So you kind of act like the cashier for all the farmers in your market. You accept the benefits, and then people are able to shop and buy food. And then at some point, you pay the, the vendor or farmer. You cut them a check for all the SNAP sales you did for them in that particular week. Um, and that type of uh, you know, economic activity is a good thing for the local economy as well, because you got a farmer that can now probably afford uh, to hire help to come to your farmer's market. Um, and so all those things, that, that dollar really turns around in the local economy. Next slide. Um, again, like I was telling you before, I think over the years with the Illinois Farmer's Market Association, 
um, with uh, SNAP Ed, uh, with the extension we've made uh, accepting SNAP pretty darn easy, especially with uh, a lot of the help that we got from the USDA. Um, at one point, and I believe it's still current, the USDA created a, uh, a cheat sheet on how to apply to accept SNAP online. It's an online application, so it's fairly easy to do. And then there are a few ways in which you can get a um, electronic benefits machine or an EBT machine to do the swiping at a low or no cost to you as a farmer's market. Uh, those things can be pretty pricey, anywhere between 800 and 1,000 bucks. But with some grants and some things that are available through the state of Illinois, uh, we can point you in the right direction to make sure that cost goes down. Uh, next slide. Sorry about the ringing phone in the background. I'm trying to manage that, but um, again, why now? It, it, it's amazing. With COVID, you would have thought you would have seen a decrease in the number of people coming to farmers markets, but I've just seen increases um, in the amount of, maybe not in the amount of people, but in the, in how much people are actually buying. Uh, folks are buying things for people who may be shut in, that can't come to a farmer's market, that may have a, a compromised immune system. Um, and then you have other benefits that are entering the market as well. We have the pandemic, uh, EBT benefits. Those are given to uh, uh, children that are in school to replace school meals. So you have a lot of that foot traffic coming to farmer's markets. Again, you're increasing that foot traffic, you helping farmers sell more food. Um, so it, it's in a good way is, you know, like at the very least COVID is helping move more food uh, out to shoppers in your neighborhood. Next slide. And that's all the, the other slides really talked about why you should accept SNAP, how easy it is to accept. But once you're able to do that, another benefit that you can offer uh, your SNAP shoppers is uh, the link match, uh, incentive that we run at Experimental Station. And uh, Link Up Illinois, which is the, um, the entity that gets grants to actually fund the program. Um, we started that back in 2011. Uh, we partnered with the Illinois Farmers Market Association and with Wholesome Wave. Um, Wholesome Wave, if you heard, heard of the Double Value Coupon Program, uh, the Link Match Program is modeled directly after that. So uh, basically you come to a farmer's market, um, you use your SNAP card for every dollar you spent on your SNAP card, you earn another dollar in link match. And that link match dollar can then be spent to purchase fruits and vegetables found at the farmer's market, which is really great. Next slide. Um, I think I may have just said this. So uh, the, the incentive is offered uh, if you're a farmer's market, if you're a co-op, if you're a farm, we even offer the incentive at um, some retail locations too. So we have an application process. It's online, you would apply for it and we would uh, offer you a grant for that particular season. Next slide. And this kind of shows you um, the buying power behind the Link Match program. So on the left side of the screen, you see how much $25 in local food would cost. And then on the right side, you see how that just doubled. That's how much food a person could bring home just from bringing their link card to a farmer's market that participates. And from that shopper earning um, up to $25 per market day of the link match uh, currency or incentive. Next slide. And again, one of the ways we do that, we make this little script, this little monopoly money. We actually, once you are approved for a grant, and most grants, uh, we approve up to 12,500 per season. Um, but, you know, some locations get a little bit more than that. It depends upon, you know, how much of the incentive that they're actually giving out to SNAP, SNAP customers. Um, and with that grant, we know that it costs some money to run any type of program. So we allow you to use 20% of that grant to uh, apply to any admin costs. And that could be um, pr uh, printing promotional or advertisement materials for your farmer's market. It says, hey, our market now accepts SNAP and link match. Come and you know, use your link card here and earn uh, the link match incentive. Um, it can even go toward the person that is swiping the card that day and, and issuing the incentive to SNAP shoppers. So we know it takes a little you know, money to actually run any programs. So that's why we allow you to 
um, use a portion of that grant for uh, admin costs. And if you click that link, uh, hopefully we have time, there's a short video clip that we've run um, in different parts of the state uh, that we can show folks, uh, Janie. Hopefully it opens up. If not, we can just sh share this with people and they can go to it themselves. But we did like a 30 second ad, CBS comes out um, to, I wanna say Daily Plaza Farmer's Market. Um, and they do a little, you know, song and dance for us and it highlights the program and it really drives pr traffic to the uh, farmer's market. Uh, what's very exciting this year is that we're going to run this same ad um, in the middle of the state, and there may be even some downstate exposure uh, as well. So hopefully we'll see more traffic being drawn to more farmer's markets in the state of Illinois. Next slide. Uh, this one shows a little bit of our impact. So um, basically over the years, we've helped over 100 farmers markets. We've worked with several food co-ops in the state. Um, I wanna say uh, may have been last year or the year before last, we started piloting a program where we worked with really small retail locations in Chicago. Um, we work with mobile markets such as Fresh Moves, um, and we also work with uh, fresh produce delivery services as well. Uh, next slide. So here's some shopper um, testimonials. Like every year we ask for some um, reporting back from our Lake of Illinois partners. And in most cases, people have really good things to say about the program. So um, as you can see, some of the highlights like uh, the first, the top uh, quote, uh, I'm able to get fresh food for my family without having to worry about the, you know, the price point. Um, that's something that you know, some SNAP shoppers really have to worry about because I wanna say the average benefit uh, for a single person in Illinois, as far as SNAP benefits, is anywhere between $125 and $139 a month. And that's not a lot of uh, money to actually shop um, and buy the healthiest foods. Um, but thankfully with the incentive program, with the link match program, that's really helping to stretch people's shopping power. And over the life of the program, since we started in uh, 2011, uh, we were able to record our partners um, you know, buying at least, you know, over $4 million worth of fresh fruits and vegetables with either their WIC or their link match and their uh, link benefits. Next slide. Some more testimonials from a lot of our partners across the state. Um, and we want to say of those farmers markets that we've actually partnered with, they represent over 700 uh, family farms. Um, so you can see on one end, um, folks that need access to food are getting uh, really good food, but the farmers are getting um, uh, another stream of uh, another economic uh, revenue stream, which is really very helpful for our farmers in Illinois. Uh, next slide. Again, more testimonials. Um, feel free to read through those. I always make me feel good when I uh, either have people come up to me at the farmer's market and thank me for the incentive program uh, or thank us for doing the work of the incentive program. And I know our partners uh, feel the same way, um, but we get a lot of these stories that's related back to us from the field, um, which uh, really helps us keep the program going, keeps, gives us the passion to do it. And a lot of these statements also talk more about how COVID has really impacted sales at farmer's markets. Um, being that we're in a central service, you know, people really came to the market um, to make sure they got healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables and everything else they can find at the markets uh, in their areas. Next slide. Um, if you take that $4 million and you uh, look at it through the prism of Moody's analytics, it, it tells us that um, the economic impact in Illinois was uh, above $7 million. So again, that dollar really traveled around the state uh, whenever folks shopped at a farmer's market and whenever people earned that incentive and spent it uh, with a farmer. Uh, next slide. Here's some of our great partners uh, that worked with us over the years and currently. Um, can't thank um, all of them enough uh, without the work of um, uh, folks either donating or uh, um, letting us apply for grants. It would be really hard to do this work. 
Um, and not to mention all the program partners that are part of the Lincoln Illinois family. Without them on the ground, this work wouldn't be possible at all. And next slide. That's really about it. Um, unfortunately, uh, our senior, our new senior program manager, Lauren Stern, couldn't be on this call. Um, but she's our main contact for the Link of Illinois program, but I'm always a good secondary contact. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. Thank you, Corey. Sorry for the tech issue on my end. Um, yeah, Deborah, do we, have, do we have questions in the chat for Corey? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Great. Oh, uh, just, nice. I wanted to let you know, Corey, that as you were speaking, I was putting the direct links to like to the match grant, you know, the impacts, the annual reports, so people could check those out. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we also thought it was important as we put this webinar together to hear from a market and to hear about the impact that Link and SNAP has had uh, on their particular market. So we are pleased to have um, the land connection with us today, uh, Jacqueline Evers and Joan Jock. And so we're gonna turn it over to them now. Thanks, Janie. We're gonna get presentation up here for everyone. I think we should be set. Um, so my name is Jacqueline. I am the executive director for the Land Connection. Um, today we're talking specifically about the Champaign Farmers Market, but the Land Connection is a much larger organization. We provide education, training, and tools to farmers, food businesses, and consumers in our effort to grow our local food mo movement. So today we're talking about Champaign Farmers Market. Um, this market has been in operation since 2015. Um, it is a small farmer's market, so we average about 13 to 15 vendors a week, um, and we operate on Tuesdays, mid-May through October from 3 to 6 p.m. Since our organization is largely about food and farm systems, this is a food and farm products only, so we do not have any tchotchkes at the market. Um, we do allow community tents to be present. Um, and those could just be different community organizations like um, the Forest Preserve or Habitat for Humanity. Um, and then they get to set up and talk about their programs. Um, they just can't sell any products. Our market is located in downtown Champaign. Um, Champaign-Urbana is largely known as our state's flagship university, home to our flagship university, University, university of Illinois. And um, our downtown Champaign area, and quite honestly, across Champaign-Urbana, we have really high food insecurity rates. So this market is located adjacent to multiple neighborhoods lacking access to fresh foods. Um, the primary source for many of those community members to access food is quick marts or gas stations. And those are also um, closing, especially after this past year, we've seen a number of closings. And so the core value of our market is and has always been food access. It is our way to provide that point of access to fresh, locally grown, raised, and produced foods. So the market started in 2015, um, and at that time, it started with funding from Experimental Station to do a SNAP match program. Um, the program was much different than it. Um, I don't think uh, Experimental Station launched their universal program until maybe three or four years later. Um, so we did the double link. Um, we did that in 2015, 16, and 17. In 2018, um, the Land Connection acquired two uh, grants, one from the Food and Security Nutrition Incentive Program, which is now um, formerly Feeney, which is now Gus Schumacher. And then we also received an Illinois Charitable Trust Award, and that allowed us to start our own SNAP programs, um, which gave us some freedom to begin experimenting with different types of link match. And I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, in 2019, as that funding was uh, dwindling, we acquired some funding from our local United Way to continue some of that experimentation, but also to launch a WIC Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program match program, a match program. 
for a program. Um, and that funding, um, what, that was a very successful experiment. And we've continued that program in 2020 and 2021 through private funding. In late 2019, 2020, we started um, bigger conversations with the city of Urbana, which operates our Urbana market at the square, which is one of the larger farmers markets in the state of Illinois. We started talking with the Urbana Business Association, which ran the winter farmers market for our communities. So that runs November to April and Common Ground, which is our food cooperative. And our goal was to build a universal link match program for C for Champaign-Urbana, we go by CU. Um, and part of that came from feedback with um, from SNAP shoppers at the farmer's markets. One of the barriers to accessing fresh foods through the farmer's market and using that SNAP match program was our market is only open for three hours, once a week, uh, six months out of the year. And so those individuals wanted more opportunities. And our thought was, um, we could do a similar program to Experimental Station here in Champaign-Urbana where um, SNAP shoppers could get currency at any of the markets and spend at any of the markets. And then they would also have the co-op to spend at as well. So that conversation started in late 2019. We did apply for some funding on our own. Those applications were not successful. Um, and so we also started talking with Experimental Station and we were able to work with Corey and Connie um, to develop a sort of Champaign-Urbana hub where the land connection is using the um, infrastructure from the Experimental Station Universal Program and just uh, taking our own spin on it here in Champaign-Urbana. And then in late 2020, as a result of COVID, COVID our Urbana Business Association shut, or, shut their doors and um, Therefore, they could not operate the winter farmer's market anymore. And so the land connection took that over. Um, and so now we are running 12 months of farmer's markets here. So we have experimented with a lot of different um, food access matching programs. Um, the Double Link is a familiar program. That's what Experimental Station is known for. Um, and that's the same program we do where we double the value of the link dollar. So um, we go up to $20. So if someone swipes up to $20, we double the value of that link. Um, in 2018, we started what was called the winter bonus program. And this was because our winter farmers market was not SNAP authorized and was they were not participating in any type of link match program. And so we had spent, you know, six months during our summer market season building up um, our shopper base and growing food budgets of, you know, hundreds of link shoppers, and then they had no place to go from November to April. So we built a program where um, SNAP shoppers at the Champagne Farmers Market that visited X number of times, um, maybe it was like 15 times in a season, um, were eligible to receive a total of $300 to use between November and April. 200 of that could be spent at our local food cooperative on fruits and vegetables. And then 100 of those vouchers could be used at the indoor market to spend on SNAP eligible items. So it was kind of like our um, triple link program. I'll talk here in a bit, but it was all of the money at one time. Um, and people really liked that program. There was not an emphasis on local for the fresh produce that um, link participants received at the co-op. Um, we interviewed all of the participants in that program at the end of the season, and we found that um, they were largely spending on citrus and um, pre-cut vegetables at the co-op, uh, pre-cut fruit at the co-op, which in itself, we did not have a problem with as an organization focused on local foods. We did hope to see more investment in our local producers. Um, and so the next year we did that, we focused on local. Um, we eventually got Urbana Business Association SNAP authorized for that winter farmer's market and were able to phase out that program. So when we took over um, the winter farmer's market in 22, or in 2020, excuse me, we were able to um, kick off a regular link match program and we did not need to use the winter bonus. We also did some experimenting with um, a program we called the end of month bonus. Um, and this was for link shoppers. Uh, the philosophy behind it was that by the end of a calendar month, um, link shoppers are um, low on the amount of funds they have left on their link card. And so we would give them $10 
a bonus $10 for any swipe. So if they swiped $1 on their link card, we would double that dollar so that they got $2 and then we would give them an extra $10 in um, vouchers to be used on fruits and vegetables. We ran this for two seasons and um, we thought it would be a big hit and it really not many people took advantage of it. And our biggest takeaway was a misunderstanding on our part at the time, um, none of the staff members we had at the Land Connection had ever been on Snap or Link themselves um, and missed a key question to ask the shoppers, which is not everybody's benefits run out at the end of a calendar month. It's a staggered benefits in the state of Illinois. So some people may have low benefits the first week of the month. Some people may have low benefits the fourth week of the month. And so we decided that putting energy into this program wasn't necessarily worth it when we already had our double link and triple link. Um, so the next program we've been doing here at the Land Connection for quite some time is what we call triple link. And um, this is just like double link, but instead of doubling the value of the link dollar, we triple the value. So if a snap shopper comes to the market and swipes um, for $20, they get their $20 in wooden link tokens, but then they get $40 in the vouchers to be used on um, fresh produce. And we do um, triple link the third Tuesday of the month. And um, Joan will talk more about where we're currently at, but that triple link program runs two times a month on Tuesday at our Champagne Farmers Market and on Saturday at the Urbana Market in the Square. And then um, we also have introduced this WIC and Senior FMNP match, which is um, started in 2019, like I mentioned. There are no federal match programs to um, cover this extra funding for WIC and Senior and Unfortunately, this program gives $20 to WIC um, participants and senior dollar, uh, $50 to senior participants. Is that right? $25. $25. So $20 to WIC and $25 to senior. And they usually get two to three months to spend that $20 and $25. That's all they get to use at the farmer's market. And so through private funding, we've, able, we've been able to triple the value of those um, WIC and senior certificates. So we give WIC participants an extra $40 to use on fresh local produce and senior participants an extra $50 to use on fresh local produce. Um, that was funded through United Way for two years. And then this year we received a significant donation from um, an individual in our community to help fund that program um, for this year and hopefully for many years to come. Okay. We'll pass off to Joan now. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. So where we are now, right now, um, we're with the Universal Link. We're doing the double and the triple link days. And we just started yesterday at our market with the WIC and Senior Match Program. And we're working out the kinks with that and figuring out what we need to do. But it's been going well. We've had a good response. And so we'll see how that goes at the Saturday market. We have a weekly local food and farmers newsletter. It's called this, The Current with a capital CU. And that just informs our community about what's going on at the farmer's market, what's new, what the benefits are, and people really like it. We've had um, a good response to that newsletter. Um, and then we have the farmer's market partnership with the city of Urbana. And that's so, this is the first year we've done that. We've been part of that partnership and it's been going really well. Um, Num for numbers, so if anybody has any questions, you feel free to interrupt me or to put them in the chat because we have the chat up. Um, this is just a little snapshot of where we've gone since 2016. And you can see the numbers have tripled since the beginning, more than tripled. Um, it's, it's very successful. The, for today, to date, so this is we're in the middle of our seventh season. And we have had 582 SNAP participants and uh, that's between both markets. So these numbers that we're, you're looking at are between the Saturday market and the Tuesday market. And um, so it's been going really well. So that's what that's what 582 is in between both of them. Yes, please interrupt. So I wanna interrupt for one second yeah. to say the 2016 on the graph you're looking at, 2016 through 2020 is just Champagne Farmers Market. 2021 is Champagne and Urbana Farmers Market. 
I will say that historically we have been neck and neck with the amount of link um, distributed at our market. Um, and so what we, these numbers in 2016 through 2020, um, if we wanted to get a better representation of what both markets together would have looked like, you could double those and that would be pretty close to what we're seeing. Even if you double $14,000, $15,000, which is what we were doing in 2017 through 2020, we're still, we still have two full months left of market season and we're, we've exceeded that doubled um, amount. And Corey asked if we're seeing a lot of PBT and the answer is yes, yes. we've seen a ton of PBT this year. And people really like it. Yes. And so um, we expected that 2021 number to be around 30, 35,000. And right now we're at 42,000 and we still have two months left, which is just incredible. Um, and because of Experimental Station's generous funding, we now offer triple link every week, um, every market of the week all the way through the end. So no more double link for us, just triple link at the market. Um, and then we distribute our weekly newsletter through MailChimp. The size of the Champagne market is about, on average, it's about 13 vendors. The Urbana market has up to 200 vendors. I think that this year though, that they've been down. So I think they have about 150 vendors on average. But a lot of those are artisans. A lot of those are artisans. So I'm not sure um, off the top of my head, how many are the SNAP accepting um, vendors or how many are fruit and vegetable farmers i'd have to go and, and see but their market is much bigger over there um and then the average number of customers for us it's about um i would say in between 1500 and 2000 per week it depends and so now that we're doing triple link every week on those triple link days it would be a lot more we'd have to see a lot more customer traffic and so i would say about between 15 and 2000 people um, PEBT is a pandemic EBT card, and those were issued, I'm, if I'm correct, only to the um, students that are in the Urbana school systems. Uh, Any student that was on free and reduced lunch. In Urbana. They weren't, they weren't issued to Champaign. Sure. I, I think Urbana think. is a full school district where the whole district qualifies as low income. So this was a unique thing for our community. It was very unique. So Champaign students that were free and reduced lunch did receive the PEBT cards, but the entire school district in the city of Urbana received PEBT cards, even if those families don't normally have SNAP benefits. Yeah. So yes. Um, so their full district received it, every single student. A lot of families did not want those benefits because they didn't need them. And so we encouraged a lot of families to come to the farmer's market to use that dollars to purchase fresh produce to uh, lift up our rural local economies. Um, and also to take that and then donate it to some of the programs that we had in the community that helped get food out to um, food insecure communities. So um, I'm sure uh, Experimental Station could share more about the PEBT program, um, but we did use some of our local stations and other uh, media outlets to help encourage PEBT shoppers to come. And I think they're still receiving some of the benefits for that because they rolled out much later than they were supposed to. And so families are still bringing those cards to the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So the interesting thing that I want to note on this slide is that our voucher, I know there's so many, before we get to some more of those questions, the voucher circulation was something that we wanted to keep track of to see if people, because of the universal link, if people were coming to the Tuesday market and then using their benefits at the Saturday market. And what we've seen because that circulation in days is 5.37. So that means they were coming to the market, getting their link and their match and they were spending it at the market that they got it at is what we've experienced so far. But still, this is the first year we've been doing this. So maybe next year, because people know that they can spend it in these different places, they will be going and spending it at the other market or at the co-op. Yeah. So uh, Dale asked, do you track the- oh, sorry. It's okay. Do it. you track the types of purchases for regular link dollars as well as match dollars, such as 75% produce, 10% baked goods, 5% of dairy? Uh, roughly because we can go back in and look at um, what each farm's redemption was. And so we know what each of those farms sells. And so that's what our big, those were where the big numbers were, where we had one farm that is actually at both of the markets 
So we actually have two farms, Sola and Meyer. So they're both markets and they had the highest number of link redeemed. And then the next one was um, the bread, the people who sell the bread, Central Illinois uh, Bakehouse, and then um, meat. meat and cheese. Yeah, those were the high numbers. So we could break it down and I had we didn't do that as a percentage of how much was distributed as to how much it was redeemed, but I would say um, most of it is with the produce. So our most diversified farm, yeah. produce farm that has fruit and basically multiple types of fruit, many different types mm -hmm. of vegetables, they were receiving about a sixth go of the coupons. Um, you have to go back. Oh yeah. And they were receiving about a sixth of the coupons. Um, the Bakehouse, which is our biggest um, bread vendor, they were receiving about a sixth of them. One thing Joan's going to talk about is um, the very intricate ways we collect data and um, how we run our market so that you can hear a bit about um, why we would know this information and how we could yes. know this information. So here's a quick, uh, this is a snapshot of our basic supplies that we use at the market. Um, we have the white machine is the PAX machine. So that's what we use to actually swipe the card and take, do the EBT and take the money out of the person's account. You can also do balance inquiries on there. They have to type in their pin. And then the iPad is where we have the market incentives app. And that's where we log the outgoing incentives. So we scan all the coupons and we enter in how many tokens we've handed out. And that's also what I use when I'm doing the accounting and I am logging the incoming incentives. And so that's how we keep balance. We keep track of how much is outgoing and how much is incoming. And we just have our binder where we keep a paper copy of all of the numbers, what we handed out, what the last four digits of their card number were. And the, for the really nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts, these green folders have um, a piece of paper where the vendor keeps track of their all of their numbers for the day. I take it back in, I double check it, I count it, I log it and then they get the empty folder and then we stuff it with the check when the checks are issued. And then that's what they get back at the next market day. And then we just keep those recycling through. Um, and so that's just a picture of kind of our standard. And then the, the um, gun in the middle, the little, it's like a grocery gun where you can scan. That's what I use to scan barcodes. It makes it much faster. So experimental stations allowed us to barcode our, okay. our coupons. It's not a standard um, thing yeah. that they allow, but we barcode our coupons. We scan them out. We scan them in, um, and that helps us better track where they're going. And then that gives us data, like the average number of days it takes for a coupon to go through circulation. And then that helps us decide what kind of programs do we need to be offering at the market? What kind of... Um, you know, if, our, if people are using their coupons the same day they're getting them, then we need to be really great about marketing the vegetables and other produce available that day at the market instead of saying, you know, focusing on sending out information through the newsletter about what's ahead, you know, a month from now, there's going to be tomatoes. Um, so that's all helpful data for us. And then our vendors are required to be a part of this program as they sell at the market. So they are required to accept the tokens if they sell SNAP eligible goods and the coupons if they sell fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And let's see, was that? Oh, here's just a quick, some snapshots. And what I was thinking is we also keep track of who is new at the market. And that's really helpful to have in the app too, so that we can see, we'll be able to see how many new customers. And that has really um, been reflected that we've had a lot of new customers based on our social media that we've put out about what our incentives are at the market. We've seen a lot of new customers. So these are just snapshots of um, basically just, I don't know if you can see that pointer, if you guys can see, this is how we, so at market, we log outgoing. Can we share this app? So That's a right good question. Now, um, so right now we would love for this app to be widely used. So I'll give you a little back history. Um, we've had a rotating cast of volunteers helping with our data collection and accounting for the market because we only have ever employed one part-time staff member to run our farmer's market. And that's really difficult to even do very basic accounting plus operation of the market. So we've always had volunteers means we've um, had a high amount of human error in counting. And ultimately we know that impacts some of our vendors if we're not giving them back the correct amount of money. And so um, for the last couple of years, we've been talking about a way to 
um, reduce human error. I am very lucky in that my partner is a mobile app developer um, for iOS, so all Apple devices, and he loves uh, doing fun technology things. So he's been working with us this last year um, to put this app together. Um, we're still working out um, what all the features we want. So it's not, it's all in uh, test mode right now while we make updates. Um, yesterday we were at the farmer's market and we went to start using the app and the camera wasn't working. And so we had to quick call and get some our updates, support. put our tech support and get some updates pushed through. So I don't, at this point in its development stage, it is not a good idea for it to be widely shared. Um, I think it would just cause a lot of chaos. But the goal would be for us to finish working out all of the kinks and then this for this to be a way for farmers markets to um, have quick access to data. It saved us today. Joan had a panic. How am I going to get all of our link numbers together? And then we just pushed in a date range. And as you can see over here on the right hand side, it churned out all of the report information we needed for a period of dates, which for us was May 1st through today. So. Um, hopefully one day it will be widely available. In the meantime, we're um, managing all of the stress of the market. This, yeah, so this is why we keep paper records still until yeah. the app is up to the point where we can trust the numbers that are coming yeah. from the reports from the app. But up until then, we still have a backup of paper records. Yeah. And I think, what questions does anybody have? Yeah, that's us? it for us. Yep. Um, so here's our contact information if you think of more things, but I think we still have some minutes left to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this time, there I don't see any additional questions. I guess this is Janie. Um, is it possible, let's just say, go back and um, market is not currently accepting link. What would be the next step, Corey? How do they get started? Let me just stop sharing our screen, Janie. Sure. Well, if a market's not accepting, um, so I don't, I'm not sure if I share with you the USDA cheat sheet, but I can share that. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. It gives you like a step-by-step -step guide on where to go to to apply to accept SNAP. So I can share that with the um, um, with Janie, and you can you can distribute that out. Um, and then there's also a flyer that tells you where you can get a, a machine at a free or reduced cost. Uh, but the thing is, you have to be able to accept SNAP first to the USDA before you apply for the machine. And I think the USDA tells us it's about 60 days before they actually approve your application. Um, with farmers markets, sometimes it can be faster. But I can share that, that cheat sheet with, uh, with, uh, with Janie now, actually, I'll find it. I think that would be great because I think what we're hearing, um, you know, the on the ground from Champaign-Urbana is that this program can be very successful, has a great impact on the community health and the community members, as well as we saw um, a significant economic impact of the sales to the vendors. So it had, it's a win-win-win. It's good for the community. It's good for the vendor. We obviously see more people coming to the market. Um, there's also, I think, a piece that, in addition, there is more incentive money than has ever been available. The Healthy Food Incentive Fund that we've all been working for for a number of years uh, is now part of the governor's budget. And there is the opportunity for um, not only the generous amount of incentive funds that um, are you know, have been previously available, but there is an opportunity for new and beginning markets to begin to accept link so that there is adequate funding to go around to everybody. So this is not something that, um, anyway, I just, I just really feel like this is the time to get markets on board if it's not something that you've done before. And I, I always go back to that number you shared, Corey, which is one in six. Um, people in Illinois uh, receive link benefits. And that's a really high number. And in our communities that maybe don't look like we have a high number of link recipients, uh, we do. And so that even if you haven't specifically identified people coming to your market that are asking if you accept link, well, that's probably because your link recipients aren't coming to your market because you don't accept link. 
And so it's kind of a catch-22. So you have to accept link before your link recipients uh, come to your market. But as we've seen in the story with Urbana Champagne, I mean, it's had a tremendous impact. We see the numbers that Corey shared. It's a huge impact across the state um, for uh, the community's health, the availability of fresh food, and then also the economic impact. So I just really encourage markets that have not yet um, embrace this idea of accepting link to, to move forward. And then I think there's a vision that's been set, you know, when we look at what Champagne Urbana has been able to do to take even a basic program and enhance it. So for the good of their community. So we kind of have the full spectrum here. Are there any additional, go ahead. Add a number to that. So I would say on average, when Champagne Farmers Market was running SNAP by itself, and I recognize that we launched this program right in the middle of COVID, so that of course increased a uh, number of food insecure people in our community. We probably were at 120 to 140 SNAP a year at our market. And I think Urbana was not much more than that. Um, they were maybe around 150. And so collectively, one would have expected us to serve around 300, but by in a total year combining our programs together, this year we're almost at 600 SNAP shoppers and we still have two months left. And what we have gathered um, working together with another market and doing this universal kind of hub situation that we have in Champaign-Urbana has allowed us to capitalize on each of our independent advertising and marketing funds to offer our community one narrative on how to access SNAP at the market to develop promotional materials. That's all about how SNAP works at farmers markets by not saying, well, at this market, it works this way. And at this market, it works this way. And if you do this, it's this. Um, and so through social media, through um, combined advertising, it's incredible how many people we've suddenly been able to reach in this community. Um, through this program and that are so grateful to have these extra dollars to add to their family's food budget every week. Exactly. I, I saw Dale put in the chat, I think it was Experimental Station a couple of years ago surveyed their, um, surveyed vendors and they found that one of the criteria that vendors now look for when they're trying to decide on which market to attend is whether that market accepts link and link snap because they know that it increases the potential customer pool. It's good for them economically, but they also um, potentially want to be a part of a community that um, makes the market accessible to everyone. So yes, we are seeing even vendors are looking for new markets are looking for that opportunity. Any other questions we can answer? Well, I know it's September and next market season seems like it's forever away. But when you think about it taking 60 days to get your link acceptance uh, through um, FNS and then it takes some more time to get a machine and then it takes the time to figure out um, the system that you're going to use and all of those other little variables, it's really not too early to start thinking about um, applying for link and getting that opportunity available to your community. Um, <clears throat> Janie, we have one additional question. Oh, yeah. they, they answered it in the chat. The question was, how long does it take to reimburse vendors? Uh, the answer is they received their reimbursement check for the previous week at the current week market. What we see though, that that is market specific. And so markets will have an agreement with their vendors as to how frequently they issue those checks uh, in return for uh, the, coup the coupons and the, and the tokens that are accounted for. But usually it's not a very long wait because we wanna make sure our farmers and our vendors uh, get their checks as quickly as possible. We don't mail our checks. So that um, could give us more days between, um, we just save money on envelopes and stamps since we see our markets market vendors every week. We just put them in their folder for that following week. And if they aren't at the market anymore, we drop the check in the mail since we do have some vendors that are like blueberries. We don't have them for all 26 weeks of the market. So yeah. And we used to do the same thing. We used to hold checks and then distribute them at the market. It was a nice touch point for the farmers market manager. We run the 61st Street Farmers Market too. 
And what vendor doesn't like to receive a check? <laughs> so, um, but we switched over to bill.com and that's been very efficient for us. So uh, now we can pay vendors even faster. I can pay them um, if they, we did sales on Saturday, if we reconcile our books on Tuesday, I can pay them by that Friday. Um, so it really is what Jamie said, it, it's, it's market specific. And I will say, if you can do the electronic option, it would probably eliminate the number of checks your vendors lose because that is a battle that we uh, we just had a vendor cash a check from eight years ago. So um, we uh, have been toying with the idea of doing the digital payments ourselves, um, just so that it's a direct deposit into that vendor's bank account and they aren't chasing around paper checks. Um, and also there is a cost to doing paper checks. So that is certainly a consideration if you are deciding if you want, how you wanna do vendor reimbursements to remember that vendors have a lot of supplies on market day. And sometimes they do not put those checks in the safest of locations. <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I saw the comment from Martha that if the board has to approve all expenditures, it could take longer. Um, but sometimes you can amend your bylaws. And uh, now that you have this new special program, where you have a subset who might be able to do just this type of uh, in and out approval, because obviously you receive money from the USDA and you are just, it's an in and out transfer. And so it might be able, you might be able through an addendum or a change to the bylaws, make that process a little faster than your typical overall organizational um, expenditures that require the board approval. For example, at ILFMA, we kind of have a, a, um, a short system for everyday expenses, but then a longer system for um, bigger expenses. Just a suggestion. I'd like to uh, thank Corey, Jacqueline, and Joan for sharing information about the Link Up Illinois program and their perspective from the uh, Champaign Farmers Market. And I'd also like to thank everyone for joining us on this webinar today.